Okay, hello everyone. Uh, today I have another uh, student with me. She is Pratiba, Pratiba Gandhi, and uh, she completed her uh, master's from NIT Varangal. Uh, but it was very tough time for her because that was COVID period and mostly people are not able to do projects at that time. Still, she managed to get a fully funded PhD in USA. So uh, Pratiba, welcome to your PDA platform, first of all, and many, many congratulations to you. Thank you, sir. So Kesi feeling are you, Pratiba? Abhi offer, teen, char offer letter chuke hai, do teen abhi pending hai. So how you are feeling now? It do feels great and like I'm very much enthusiastic. I'm looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. So I want to let our no uh, audience know that Pratiba is one typical case where she actually made her profile. Uh, she was not able to do very good project during the COVID time, but after that she joined uh, uh, some research institute in Chandigarh and she still makes uh, her profile. Initially, Pratiba, I want to tell you when you joined Yorpedia, I was very skeptical whether you will get PhD or not. But finally, uh, you showed everyone you proved me wrong. And uh, this is actually a very great thing. So, uh, Pratiba, we will start. First of all, I think our audience uh, want to know a little bit about you. Can you please introduce yourself? Yes, yeah, sure, sir. As you have already told, I am Pratiba Gandhi. I live in Hisar, Haryana. I have completed my bachelor's from Dean College, Kurukshetra University. Then I, for my master's, I moved to Telangana. I did my master's from NIT Vanagar. Currently, I'm doing a, a project, research project at Aisar Mahali. Hmm. Yes, so how much time you spend in Aisar Mahali after your master's? Uh, almost a year. Almost a year. Okay, so uh, I will start from your master's, first of all. Uh, in the very first semester, I, I think like you did coursework and how much CGPA you got during that period? Uh, my CGPA was around 8.02, I guess. Mm. So some yeah. students think like very high CGPA is required for fully funded PhD, but I would say like eight is decent CGPA. If you have eight CGPA, then you have decent chance of getting into uh, this fully funded PhD. So uh, Pratiba, I know like you want to know, uh, you want to go for PhD in abroad from the very beginning, but that was the COVID period when you are not able to go to college and perform some research. So how you manage that time? Like after your coursework, how you manage all these things? Yeah, it was very difficult actually because uh, doing a research in COVID times was a task. So mm -hmm. to manage that, I joined a computational laboratory where I can do some sort of computational work at my home. So that okay. gave me a different kind of exposure and mm -hmm. a different perspective to my research, co-research, which I'm doing in organic synthesis. So, mm -hmm. but then eventually I find something near my house also to work in some uh, local labs where like in uh, I have Guru Jambeshwar University, Haryana Agriculture University near my home. I went there and learned about different fields of research where I can go. So I just utilize that time in that way. Okay, I think I forgot to tell our uh, audience like what is your department and what is your specialization? Can you tell us? Yeah, my department is chemistry and uh, my specialization is organic chemistry, particularly synthesis. Mm, okay, so uh, I know like when you have to apply for fully funded PhD, you have to write this GRE exam, TOEFL exam. So when you are applying, did you write this exam and is it actually required for your PhD process? Yeah, I gave all these exams, GRE optional, GRE subject test and uh, TOEFL also. GRE mm -hmm. is not at all required. I applied in 13 of the schools and GRE was not required in any. For some schools, it was written that GRE is optional, but it won't be counted when we will evaluate you. So GRE is not required. TOEFL was very much required in most of the mm -hmm. cases. Okay. And uh, one thing I want to know, like whether GRE is not required due to COVID or it is not required at all in any of the school where you applied actually? For some of the schools, it was written that due to COVID, it is not required. So for mm -hmm. some of the schools, they said that they have completely eliminated this protocol of GRE. So it mm -hmm. depends. We actually don't know right now. And in which semester of your master's you wrote this exam, GRE? Actually, I wrote GRE after my MSc. I oh, started looking 
PhD mm-hmm. after my masters only. Mm-hmm. Okay, after your masters, you decide like now you have to go to PhD. Okay, so uh, how you uh, start this process? Like when you decided I want to go for PhD, how you started? First. Okay, so uh, I completed my masters in May 2021, and in uh, August I thought that I should go for PhD, and I started applying. I was not very confident, and then uh, one of my friend told me about your PDA, and I talked to you for the first time when I was about to join your PDA. I joined your PDA in November, precisely 29th November, and the last mm-hmm. day for ex- admissions was 15th of December, and in most of the cases it is first of December. Mm-hmm. so uh, you definitely gave me hope that i can go for it but yeah my profile was not ready and it is not possible to get anything in that short span of time but mm-hmm. uh, i i would say with your pdia i got to know about the perfect series sops and what is exactly needed to get admission so eventually i worked over these things during the upcoming year and then that's how i got it Hmm. Okay, so I think in this whole process, uh, emailing to professor is very very important. So, did you send emails? How many professors? Uh, like you sent emails to how many professors? Yeah, I would say now I do believe that it is really important. Hmm. It, it it also creates a hopeless situation. I'll say that when professors don't reply to your ma- mails, hmm. I send I didn't send much mails. I sent only twenty five to thirty emails. where i got reply from five or six and uh, very positive replies were from three professors only okay. and uh, when i'm seeing my results uh, i used a thing called a mail tracker and uh, those professors who have seen my mail and not replied i have got selection in those universities i do get positive mm-hmm. replies from two or two universities but i am not getting any the i got re- mm-hmm. rejection from those two yeah but mailing professors is really important because it just mm-hmm. introduces my profile and myself with them so it definitely helps to get the admission that is actually true when i am talking to some professors in us uh, they keep me uh, they keep telling this thing if you are an international student they don't know you 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 may know them but they don't know you so you have to send emails and it is very very important to introduce yeah. yourself to the professor yeah, yeah. uh my next question is like when you send email to the professors uh you told like you sent 25 to 30 how many replies you got out of that six or seven i don't remember the exact number but it was more mm-hmm. than six yeah i mm-hmm. do remember that more than six or seven i got uh mm-hmm. i started mailing in i would say uh, in august i started mailing the professors because from February to July or August, I was working on my CV because I was lagging much behind the others com other competitors. I had mm-hmm. to work on my CV. I had to work on my SOP. And CV me there were there were like four to five things with uh, like I was not having any core uh, or deep strong research experience. I was lacking mm-hmm. in work experience. I was not having any paper or publications. Uh, no uh, presentations or webinars. so i had to work on these things that's why i started mailing in august and i okay. was i got my first reply on 29 september okay that's great so in replies like whether they schedule some meeting with you or they directly tell you like i am going to select you you are you can apply to this university how it happens basically in in one case uh, it was an instant meeting uh the professor said i'm very much interested in your profile let's set up a meeting after a week uh in one case it was like that in another case it was like uh, yeah i am interested i would like to meet and uh, know more about your research it was a sort of interview so i got these two things where i was able to interact with the professors and in rest of the cases it was just like yeah this is a nice profile go for it we look forward for your application mm. so when they set up an interview with you like what sort of questions they ask how you prepared for that interview and how long was that interview okay so when i got the call for interview i contacted your pedia and uh, i asked what like how will it go and i was informed about some of the questions and there was a mock interview also with you i remember i guess yeah mm-hmm. so uh, the questions were like uh, what kind of research i have done 
and uh, what is my research back background and uh, what kind of graduate student I am and what I see in my professor. Like, okay. uh, yeah, and uh, how I think peers should be. These mm -hmm. were like basic questions. I think they uh, want to know more about how I, how I am as a person. So mm -hmm. whether I can go to their lab or not. These were very basic questions. So they were testing my English proficiency and mm -hmm. uh, how I am as a person. These two things they were testing. And uh, for research, they were not very, I would say, rigid about it. They were like, mm -hmm. okay, this is the work you are doing. This is the work you will do if you come to my lab. And it is not necessary if you are very much aware about it or not. But you should be willing to learn. Yes. I think uh, this is the purpose of interview. First of all, they want to check your communication skills. You are coming to their lab, whether you can communicate with them. It is very important. And research wise, I think from your CV, they got the idea like whatever you did and they are not much interested in that. So, uh, OK, my next question to you is basically once you send emails to the professor, you have GRE score, TRIFL score, how you shortlist the universities like here I have to apply and how, in how many universities you applied actually? OK, so uh, first of all, I didn't shortlist any professor at uh, like I didn't make any Excel sheet for the mm -hmm. professor. It was like I know uh, that I am going to mail in 25 universities or 30 universities. I was having the name of universities only and mm -hmm. uh, I set up days. Uh, because I was working in organic synthesis lab, it was very difficult to take out any time from that. So I mm -hmm. kept Saturday Sundays for mailing only. So mm -hmm. after coming back to lab, I was like, this is the university and here is the professor. There are three professors which are working in my field. And uh, I just uh, send random mails to, okay, this uh, I have mailed to this university, this university, this university. I have shortlisted universities instead of professors. And university shortlisting was based on number one, QS world ranking. And number two was where I have uh, some of my seniors. These were the two things. I know people or somehow I know someone in those universities from my field only. Uh, either, uh, uh, postdoc either a phd or some ms student who has done some internship i just look for some links and then i move to her so that's how okay. i did that so uh you applied to uh which universities can you name them okay so uh first one was michigan uh, university of michigan and at ball uh, mm -hmm. University of San Diego, University of Southern California, Ohio State University, University of North Texas, Arizona State University, and uh, Minnesota, University of Minnesota, and Indiana mm -hmm. University. There were 13. I think I may be missing someone. University of Utah. That's fine. Yeah. Mm, that's fine. So I think your list, after listening to your list, there are some universities which are ambitious. There are some universities yeah. which you think like I can get easily. So this is very smart choice, actually, I would say. Yeah. So yeah, Pratibha, this is actually very good information which you provided us. And uh, I would say like all the very best for your future career now. And I think you have to go for visa interview. Still, you have to yeah. uh, go for that visa interview. And all the very best for that. And uh, yeah, mostly people after going to US, they forget us. So I would say like if any of your junior will come, tries to con uh, contact you, then please help them. And sure. yeah, this is this is our message to our audience. Also, if you want to know more about uh, from Pratibha, you can contact us. Thank you, Pratibha, for being on Yourpedia. And it's a great after interaction with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It was great for me also. Thank you so much.